Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Cabbage. I'm going to be telling you how to install the latest NVIDIA drivers and enable them for your SLI system and how to set up SLI um, for different games or just for your daily browsing needs. Um, I'll also run through different installations for the drivers themselves as well as tweaking with NVIDIA Inspector, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's start right away. First off, you're going to want to go to NVIDIA's website, which has the NVIDIA drivers, which I will link in the description. Um, it will ask you a few questions in their drop-down menu. It will ask you what OS version you're running, so Windows 7, Windows 10. It will ask you for what type of OS you're running, so 32-bit, 64-bit, um, you know, whatever. It will ask you what series card you're running. Um, and what I mean by that is when you buy a graphics card, so say for NVIDIA, uh, I have the 980 Ti. So I would pick the 900 series for that drop-down menu. And then below that drop-down menu, I would pick in particular the 980 Ti. Um, so, you know, for 760, 700, and then the pick 760 respectively. Um, after that, you're going to want to go ahead and pick the WHQL version of that. You'll either get beta or WHQL for your dropdown. You want to always pick WHQL because that is the Windows compatible and optimized version. That is the one that has been looked at and thrown together and has been said to work the best with Windows. For Mac, I'm sure you'll have a different thing. I'm not sure. Um, with, especially with Macs, another thing to note there is Macs are very specific. Certain video cards you cannot buy and throw into a Mac, um, other ones you can. NVIDIA's cards are very specific. They have big cards specific in this series for Macs. It will say such and such Mac edition. So you've got to go download the drivers with those ones. Let's get started. Once you download this driver, you'll get a folder like that or a file like that in your download. It'll say the drive number the version for what you know desktop or laptop depending on which one you're using the os you're using so windows 10 what version of that os so 64-bit 32-bit respectively i use 64-bit and windows 10 so it'll say that for me so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run that executable it will do a little pop-up and ask you where you want to extract it go ahead and extract that to somewhere where you'll remember where it's located at this is for backup purposes, this is for whether or not you want to delete it off your computer when you're done, or whether or not you want to reinstall it later on. I like to keep a backup just in case. Once you run that, it will pop up with this window. It'll do a quick systems check, and it will, do, uh, it will search your system to make sure everything is compatible and will work with this driver. Uh, if it goes wrong, a lot of the time it will not tell you why it went wrong. It'll basically just say this is not compatible with your copy um, or not compatible with your computer or your hardware or something, your OS. Um, all you have to do at that point is go back and either re-download the same driver or re-download under different circumstances. So if you accidentally click 64-bit and you only have 32-bit, download 32-bit instead. Once you finally get it running, it will pop up with this systems check, and if it passes, you hit agree, you know, regular license check. You'll be presented with two options, the express recommended and the custom. For those of you who haven't installed your driver previously, pick the express recommended. This will go over and install all of the recommended and necessary files for your GPU to run properly. Um, the, I won't run it right now because I already have mine installed and it will actually try and overwrite mine which I don't want. The other thing you want to do is if you already had a previous driver installed, you want to use the custom advanced version. The custom advanced version allows you to install certain portions of the driver um, and not install others or to do a clean install by deleting the previous driver and reinstalling uh, this one in its place. Clicking on that, you'll be presented with this little window with a list of options. So, basically, you'll have your graphics driver. It will tell you your current version and your new version. The 3D Vision Controller driver and 3D Vision driver are unnecessary unless you have a 3D monitor. Um, those are quite pricey, so I wouldn't expect a lot of people do. I normally do not check those, so they'll usually be unchecked. For the HD Audio driver isn't necessarily necessary for everybody. If you have a video card that uses a DVI, or I'm sorry, not DVI. If you use a video card that has HDMI or micro HDMI or DisplayPort, you will be transferring audio waves over that cord and into your monitor, and if it has speakers, into the speakers in your monitor. Um, I keep it installed just in case because I do use DisplayPort. So we're going to leave that one. 
This is for NVIDIA GeForce Experience. This is NVIDIA's proprietary software that supports shadow play and uh, driver optimization and game optimization for certain settings. Um, I personally have it installed. I didn't previously. I'm iffy depending on what it brings from each update. I'm not a fan of it, but I do like shadow play and it is a useful tool. So I recommend it if you're a novice computer user, you know, to use that particular setup. Physics software. This is for the physics uh, or NVIDIA's proprietary physics software and libraries. A lot of games will use this. So you're, if sometimes you'll get a game that will try and install this on its own, I recommend keeping this checked and installing that. If you are over, if you were installing this over a previous installation for a driver and updating, always check box this perform a clean installation box. What this will do is it'll, to the best of its ability, get rid of the old driver files and replace them with the new driver. Now, I've already installed this, and we're going to go ahead and skip that process, but you basically hit next and let it do its thing. Your screen will flash, your screen will do a few funky things, don't worry about it. It will deal with it and it will go back to normal, you just got to let it finish the installation. Once you're done installing, you'll get a little pop-up in your right-click menu, as well as a shortcut on your desktop called the NVIDIA Control Panel. When you click that, this is what opens up. This will be the page that you're presented with, and this is normal to see. What you're going to want to do is, if you're using SLI, for those of you who aren't using SLI, this is probably the point where you'd want to fall off until I speak about settings. Uh, if you're using SLI, you're going to want to go immediately to Configure SLI Surround and PhysX. Um, keep in mind that some video cards do not support SLI without a SLI bridge. Others do. So if you don't see this popping up and you have a dual video card system with the same identical card, you're going to need to buy an SLI bridge to attach between the two of them. You'll see a little PCIe-like throng, which is a little uh, port on top of the video card, and that's where you plug those in. Plug them in any direction. It's Once you've got that settled, you're going to want to go into this page, and you're going to want to click on Maximize 3D Performance. Now, this is debatable. Once you click this, it will want you to hit apply and it'll run through and ask you to close down any programs that are blocking it and do as if it were doing a small driver installation. But if you have multiple displays and you're wanting to make it uh, render at one solid resolution, say you have three, four monitors in a row and you don't want each monitor to be rendered uh, individually, you would hit span displays with surround. Now, I'm not going to be going into that today because I don't have a whole lot of experience dealing with that particular version of SLI. Once you've done the installation, and once you've activated Maximize 3D Performance, your screen should, you know, do a few funky things and tell you SLI enabled. Once that's been done, you can choose right here which processor, be it your CPU, your second video card, or your first video card, or automatic, which one you want to handle physics. I like to keep mine on automatic so that if I'm using AFR1 or AFR2, which is alternate frame rendering, I like to pick auto so that the game that I'm using, which may or may not already know which works best, picks whichever one it knows works best. If you have a beefy CPU, I suppose you could do CPU too. I wouldn't recommend it. It works better and it's more compatible with direct video drivers. Once you've gotten that set up, uh, you're pretty much set to go. That's all you really need to do. Uh, most games will run defaults with an automatic setup that will enable you to get an average amount of frame. 